Hi handsome, welcome to my 35th video. This time, we are doing an actual guide for once. And out of all the life skills to the guide for, we chose trading. Which could be summarized by either this picture or this following skit. Where is it? Where's the rest? The money, Skylar, where is the rest? Skylar, where is the Trading rework! I changed no wars. What? You did what? But let's just say that you are someone that wants to get into trading anyway. Maybe that's because you got a bunch of timber and ore from worker nodes that you don't know what to do with and don't want to just sell on the center market. Maybe it's because you are preparing for the imaginary time when we get the fabled trading rework. Or maybe it's just because you want to try something new in the game. Whatever the reason may be, let me show you how to level trading the fastest so you can start making at least some sort of money from it. Now, I will preface this video by saying that I will not be focusing on profitability, but instead on how to level your trading life skill up as fast as possible. This is for two main reasons. First, trading doesn't scale with mastery, just with the actual life skill level. Thus, the only way to increase profitability is by gaining trading levels. Second, the profits of any given trade changes at least a bit basically every day and trade crates need a lot of setup and time invested so there is a chance that by the time you get these crates done they won't be profitable anymore making the guide obsolete. EXP values of items will stay the same and require systemic changes to the game such as a new expansion to be affected. With that out of the way let's get into the things everyone tells you to do. Trade crates. Since this is a topic that you can find anywhere else here on YouTube or Twitch, I won't get too much into detail with it and only tell you things that you may have not heard before. But let's get the basics out of the way just in case. Trade crates are separated into two categories. These are money crates, such as Balanos Timber or Snowfield Jade crates, that you make profit from and are not the topic of this video. The other category is junk crates that come in three forms. Herbal or crop, timber and ore. Before we continue, I need to mention that every single trade credit item has the same base EXP value, that being the value of 10. The only thing that can improve the EXP you get from trading to these crates is the distance bonus. Now, if you do decide to do these crates or any trading item in general, you might notice that the trade window says that the distance bonus cap is at 150%. But this is not entirely true. The cap exists only for improving the silver value of the crate, not the EXP bonus. So the EXP distance bonus is uncapped. Currently, the absolute best trade bonus in the game is from Arahaza to Yugjo Street, found in the newest expansion, which is 202%. But since Arahaza only has one workshop, the best distance bonus you will see the most often will be Valencia to once again Yugjo Street at 186%. So let's talk a little bit more about the junk crates themselves. You can either do them by having a worker bring you the materials and have the crates do themselves without your intervention, in which case you are looking for nodes that are the closest to cities. If you have level 40 workers, it doesn't really matter which city you choose, as the workers can bring those items into any other city of your choosing, even if the cities are not connected to each other. If you are doing it this way, I would recommend getting the pumpkin nodes near Heidel, the grape nodes in Olvia and Viola and Tiger Flower nodes in Land of the Morning Light. In which case you will need to also make those crates in Land of the Morning Light as well, since you can't make them anywhere else as far as I know. If you want timber nodes, your best bet is probably Palm Timber near Arahaza or Valencia if you don't want to go to Arahaza. And if you don't want to do palm timber, then your best bet is Elder Tree near Altinova. For ore crates, you want lead ore, and then the best lead ore node is near Glish. So, there you go. The other option is to just make the crates by buying the ingredients for them on the central market or alternatively through NPC vendors. Here, the best choice are once again violas and tiger flowers, 
and even better are reeds from Land of the Morning Light, as they are by far the cheapest ones on the center market, at least right now. If your center market doesn't have these options available for whatever reason, the best choices would be Sunrise Herb, Silver Azalea or Paprika as these are the cheapest vendor options. And the vendors are located in Calfion and other big cities but you can probably just find them on the internet. Now that you have your workers set up and crates made, we also need to talk about how you get them to the place you want to sell them at, notably how to carry them across the ocean. Now we have three methods although the last two are kind of similar to each other. The first method is the easiest and it's to transport them through the storage keeper transport function. You can only transfer a maximum of 30,000 weight which is this many crates based on the type of the crate. The second and third options I will link together because like I said they are basically the same you are going to have to use a boat. This can be done either by you getting a friend or a guildie to take you where you need to go while you are overstacked on your character, or if you are like me and have no friends, you can overstack a horse and travel with it on a boat yourself. But I hear you ask, Lunai, I heard the horses cannot travel on boats. What, what do you mean? Stack it on a boat? Well, you heard wrong. A horse can absolutely travel on boats, just not on any of the big boats like Carax and Caravels. The best choices, therefore, are either a ferry cop or the fishing boat. It doesn't really involve anything special, you can just whistle the horse on the ship or on the cog, but in case that doesn't work for you, because it sometimes didn't work for me, just make sure that the ship is touching the pier. That there is like walkable surface between the ship and the, the wharf so the horse can actually travel there but it should not be a problem then you can just autopath to nampo and unless you get disconnected you can return back several minutes later to offload the horse by once again whistling him from the boat once you stand on solid ground so there you go thank me later as for how many crates you can take at once using this method the number is almost the same regardless of if you are overstacking this on your character or horse. Once again, this depends on how heavy the crates are, making the herb or crop crates the best since you can take most of them at once. You will see the numbers on your screen once again, it's a lot of crates. When it comes to connecting the cities, ideally you want the nodes between the crate city and the hand in city to be connected, since that way the transport method becomes three times cheaper and you also get more money from the junk race themselves. But as far as I know, you still get the full EXP value of the crate even if it's not connected to each other, so if that's all you care about, if all you care about is EXP, or you simply don't have the contribution and still want to do this for some reason, you can still trade them in for the full EXP value but I would still not recommend it and just wait till you have more contribution or until you find a way to unlock it. Alright, so that's trade crates out of the way and now that we are done with the thing that everyone will tell you about, let's move on to the more wacky ways to get your trading level up. Originally, I wanted this video to be more of a can you do trading without trading crates, similar to my other videos, but I decided that I might as well do the entire guide since there are things that I am pretty sure at least some of you did not know about. The best thing about these other options is that you don't have to worry about transporting the trade goods that you will get from these activities that I will show, since all of the following trade items you can use the Magnus well with. And with the next two options that I will show you, you don't even need to connect your nodes to get the full money value. You probably already know that I'm talking about fishing. Every fish, except the red fish, has the same base EXP trade value of 10, same as the trade crate, and the red fish have a value of 100. This means that you got two options when it comes to leveling your trading through fishing. Either you fish in faraway places like Arahaza or Valencia to get the largest distance bonus, or you fish in a place with a high chance of getting red fish such as the Velia beach or the ocean around Lema Island. Also, 
you should 100% get the fish tank from the sea palace in Land of the Morning Light if you haven't got it already, since it will give you 50 inventory spots just for the fish. If you want to actively fish or just AFK fish overnight, that is up to you, but AFK fishing is the only way to get non-crate trading items while you are not playing the game. But fishing is not the only way to get trade goods from the water either. May I reintroduce you to underwater gathering? Every underwater gathering trade item has a base EXP value of 100, with the only exception that I was able to find being crawfish, which have the base EXP value of 10. This means that every lobster, giant pearl clam and even sea anemone are worth more than 10 crates, while being able to be fast traveled with. The lobsters and clams don't need nodes to be connected for the full price value either, making them the perfect trade good to power level on. There are only two problems here. First, you're doing underwater gathering again. Unlucky. But if you want to know how to do it without going underwater, I might have a video for you. Second, these trade goods are the same as fish, which means that they do not stack with each other. And even with a lot of inventory slots, all it takes is one or two minigames proking in the right time to be completely full on inventory slots. You can see that as a good thing since that means that you can get a lot of EXP fairly quickly, but the constant back and forth between the underwater gathering spots and trade managers can be very tiring. For this reason, I would recommend either the Alnaha Island underwater spot, which is very close to Okila's Eye, meaning you can take the Magnus well from it to utilize the best distance bonus, or Papu Krini, which I have also already shown in my previous video on underwater gathering, and now for the Magnum Opus. The reason why I decided to make this video in the first place. What if I told you that you can grind on your season character and get your trading levels up that way? Because you absolutely can. I am of course talking about none other than the pirate grind spot at Quid Islands which I am sure is going to bring a nostalgic tear to every veteran PvPers eye. These pirates are special because they drop coins that act as trade goods. This is not the only way to get those coins, you can get some through quests and there is also a special timed event in Okila's Eye that spawns chests and opening them can give you a random coin or bartering goods. So if you don't want to grind and you just want to have an alt there and some sort of timer for that, you can absolutely do that as well. All of these coins have a base EXP of 4, which is the lowest of all the trade items that I have been able to find and you do need to have the node invested into to get the full value of these coins as well. On the other hand, you get hundreds of coins per hour in pirates and some extra money on top. How good is the money you might ask? It's not very good. Um, I mean, did you think it was secretly like 1 billion an hour? I mean, it could have been, but it's not. Either way, it is a very easy way to get a lot of trading EXP since these coins all stack, so you can just put them on your ship while you grind and then store them easily in whatever storage you might want to store them in. Now, if you want to grind here, I'm sure you get some questions about the spot. First of all, here are the tables for how much money per hour you should expect. There are two types of trash, both of which you can trade in at a special NPC for a little bit more money and this is the best case scenario for both of them. The coin value is calculated with nodes invested at skilled 10 trading which should be fairly easily achievable for even a newer player. But if you don't have the nodes invested, you can disregard them since the money from that is basically negligible. The only real money makers here are the coral rings and earrings. And the reason I got them here listed as Try in the tables is because, at least on EU, Try is the only level of enhancement that seems to be getting any sort of traffic on the central market, making the other levels basically unsellable. Using the 10 buff here will increase your coins per hour by about 2 to 300 at the cost of halving your non RNG profits. Do this on your own risk. And I would still recommend going here if all you want is to trade EXP. Finally, the question you might be all asking now is why even bother with the non-crate options? 
And while it is a good question, it also has a very obvious answer. You can do these activities while making the grades. So if you want to absolutely min-max the trading leveling process, your best bet would be to invest contribution into Valencia and connect it to Yugjo Street, make herb or crop crates and use the NPC transport function through the storage keeper to transfer them from one city to another, then either grind at pirates or do underwater gathering for lobsters and oysters during your active gameplay time and after that AFK fish during the night. How much of the difference is this going to make compared to just doing the crates and then doing something else in your time? I cannot tell you, but I can tell you that it is going to be a difference. And that is it for today, handsome. I hope you like this one. It was once again a little bit different than usual since I turned a challenge type video into more of an educational one. Next video I want to make is something special, although I have no idea if I will manage to do it. So if I won, I will just have to surprise you with something else. With that being said, remember to like and subscribe. Let me know which one of these new trading methods you are going to try out or if I missed some. And enjoy your grind.